For this video, we are in Moho, and we're going to create a new document. File and New, or Control N, or Command N, if you're on Mac. Now, I want to import that PSD file we were working on in the previous video. We can do so by going up to File, Import, General Import, or we can use Control Shift Y or Command Shift Y if you're on Mac. Here, I'm going to locate the copper.psd and double click. And here, we will have three options for import. We can choose to do it individually, by composite, or select layers. Individually will bring in all the layers individually, just like it was inside of Photoshop. Composite will compress all the layers into one, and select layers allows us to choose which layers we want to bring in. We're just going to choose individually for this particular part, and we now have everything imported. You will see that the layer structure is the same as it was inside of Photoshop. One difference, though, is copper.psd is a group we did not have in Photoshop before it started with head and then went on from there. But what's nice about this is it makes it easy to convert over to a bone layer when it's time to rig. That also means there's really no reason to create a separate folder for your character when you are setting it up inside of Photoshop since Moho does it automatically. Now, one thing I'll do here is if we zoom out, and I'm just gonna use my mouse wheel to do this, you can see that the character is actually bigger than the frame itself. The blue outline is what our audience will see when we export this as a video or as an image, whatever we plan to do. So with copper.psd selected, I'm going to go over here to the layer tools and use the transform layer tool and grabbing the edge of this red selection area, I'm going to shrink this down so that way it fits into frame. There we go. Now we're going to need a bone layer to set up the bones for this character. You can create a bone layer by coming over here to your layers panel and going to new layer and choosing bone right down here. And that will create a new blank bone layer where you can add in different layers and eventually set up your bones. But since we have a group for the character automatically created for us, we can right click and you can do this with any group inside of Moho. We can come down and choose to convert to bone. So now we have a new icon for this group indicating it's a bone layer. You'll also note that we have bone tools now. And we have the ability to select bones, add bones, transform, manipulate, and the list goes on. Now, when you're on frame zero, you will have different tools. So with the bone layer on frame zero, we can actually go in and add bones. But if you go past frame zero, you'll note that the tool selection shrinks and we can only select, transform, manipulate, and reparent and do a few other things pertaining to the bones. So like a vector layer where you can't draw past frame zero, you can't add bones past frame zero inside of Moho. So let's go back to frame zero and we're going to add in our bones now using that add bone tool. So A on the keyboard will select it. And we want to come over here and zoom in just so we can get a better view of this and add in our pelvis bone. So we're just going to come in and I'll click once to create what is called a pin bone. This is just a one point bone and you can see it's been added right here. Now I'm going to draw a bone going straight up from the pelvis and this is going to be the bottom portion of the body. So we'll have two bones making up the torso. If you want to draw a perfectly straight bone going up, you can hold down shift and then start drawing by clicking and dragging and you can see we can create a two point bone. And this also allows us to go at 45 degree angles. So you can see here, we can holding in shift go at 45 degree angles or just perfectly straight in the case of what we wanna do here. And we're going to go up to the edge of the scarf and release. Now starting at the top of that bone that we just made, we're going to hold in shift, 
click and drag and bring this up. Now you may note as I've drawn these three bones, the latest one that I draw turns red. And that means that the bone is selected when it's red. And that also means the next bone we draw in sequence will be tied to that bone. So as it stands right now, we have our pelvis, and then we have the bottom body bone, which is tied to the pelvis, and the chest is tied to that bottom body bone, which then is tied to the pelvis. And that's how the hierarchy is going to work. And you can, if you need to, make adjustments after the fact by using the reparent bone tool. So if I click on this, it might be kind of hard to tell, but you can see we have arrows pointing down, indicating that we're connected from here to here to here. So we're just going to keep going right now in this fashion and select the bones that we want to connect to as we move along. The next bone we want to add is the head bone. So we can come in and using the add bone tool with the chest bone still selected. And just one thing to note as well, if you have the add bone tool and you want to select a different bone, let's say the chest bone isn't selected, you can hold an alt and click on a bone to select it. So you can see here, I have the add bone tool holding an alt and clicking allows me to do this. And now I can keep going. So we'll bring up the head bone just like this. And we're now going to add two bones to each ear to allow them to bend. So with the head bone still selected, we can come in and click and drag right here and go up to about the middle of the ear. And then we'll do a second bone by clicking and dragging and going up like so. Now let's alt click on the head bone, come over here to the second ear and do the same thing. Now we want to focus on the limbs. So let's just kind of zoom in here a little bit and we're going to alt click on the chest bone because it makes the most sense for the arms to be tied to the chest bone. And we can come in here and starting near the top of this arm, click and drag and move down to about the middle of the arm, click and drag and go down to the edge of the glove. And then one more time clicking and dragging and going out to the length of the hand and releasing. Now we want to select the chest bone again for the second arm. So alt click on that bone and we're going to come over here now to our layers and under body, I'm going to hide jacket as well as scarf bottom and just the regular scarf layer as well as button. And this makes it easier to see now what we're going to rig. So making sure we're still on the bone layer and add bone tool is selected. We can come in here now and click and drag and make some adjustments and set this up just the way we want it with those three bones. While the torso is hidden, I can see now I was a little bit off with my rigging with the arm. It's really not the end of the world that we are missing that little piece right up there with the bone. But still, since we can see it here, let's take the transform bone tool and you'll see that we have two red dots that appear on the bone. I'm going to click on the top one and just move it up like this. And you'll note that any bone that has children attached to it will move along just like that. But we're going to put it up to right about there. And then we can move the hand so that it's more in line with what we're seeing on screen here. And then using the end of this second bone here, if we place our cursor over, you can see that we have this half circle, which allows us to rotate. But if we place it closer to the edge, you'll see that we have now a diagonal line, which indicates that we can resize and we can bring it up to about right there. And there we go. Let's alt click now on the pelvis, come in here, and we're going to just add in two bones for each leg. We don't have feet layers, so we're not going to add a bone for the foot. So starting at the top, we can come in and just add a bone to about there and then click and drag and go down just like that. Alt click on the pelvis. One more time, we can come in and add in those bones. Now let's go ahead and bring back 
all of our layers here so that we can see them. And we're going to give this a test. So with the copper layer selected, and on frame zero, we can test out the animation using the Manipulate Bones tool. So if I click on the Manipulate Bones tool, and I start to move around, you can see that we can test this out. And it's really not working the way we had intended. Nothing is separated, everything is squishing in and looking distorted. So we need to go in and do some layer binding, because right now what's happening is the rig is adhering to bone strength. And if I come in and zoom in on this, you can see that we have these influence clouds that are hovering over each bone. And essentially anything that's tied into that cloud will be moved. And so anything on the edge of this will also get pulled. And it's just, as you can see here, you move the hand and all of a sudden you have this part of the head being affected. And it just doesn't really work the way we want. So we're going to have to separate things out. So to begin, let's go to the layers and let's talk a little bit about binding your groups. If right now we were to bind this group to a bone, any of the layers underneath, the child layers, will also be tied to that bone and they cannot be bound to any other bone. So just as an example, if I were to come in here on the head group and click on the bind layer tool, which will allow us to bind this, and we click on the head, that is going to work out in our favor to some extent. Because if we come over here and give this a test, you can see that the head is moving along. However, let's say for whatever reason, you wanna go in and bind something else to let's say the pelvis bone inside the head, but you come in here and you want to, let's say, do that with the pupil, you'll notice that you have no ability to bind that layer. And that's because you have the main group already bound. So just keep that in mind. And to unbind something, just click on the layer that you want to unbind, click on the bind layer tool, and then click off of any bone, and that will unbind it. And you'll notice once I unbind that and go into, let's say the pupil, I can now see the bones and I can once again bind if I wish. So with all that said, we're going to jump over here to the eyelids and start binding. So here we can bind the entire eyelid group. There's really no reason to do any individual binding. So we're just going to grab the bind layer tool and click once on the head to bind it. Now for the eyes, we could do something with the pupils to animate them even with another bone. So what I'll start doing here is go into the eyes group and for blink up, we're just going to select the head, blink down, also select the head. But for open, we're going to expand this and go into each eye group. So we can choose the right eye to be bound to the head, the left eye to be bound to the head. And how about we create a bone for the pupils so that way they can be controlled and that will make pupil movement easier. So really quick, let's go back here and click on the copper bone layer since we need to select the bone layer to add bones. And I'm going to click once on the head bone so that it's selected, click on the add bone tool and then click once to add a bone. And I can rename this then to pupils. So what this will do, first of all, is, is since we bound it to the head, if you move the head at any point, you can see that this bone is moving along with it, which will allow the pupils then to move along with the head as well. So that way nothing will be broken when you move the head and it can just make pupil movement easier. So let's go back to frame zero now and click on pupil right and we're going to bind it to that bone and then pupil left, bind it to the bone. And just to test this really quick, going to frame six, we can go to the copper layer and we're going to grab the transform bone tool and we can click and drag and you can see how this is going to look now. We can move the pupils around and if we move the head, the pupils still go with the head because this bone is moving with that bone, but we can still individually change those directions as we see fit. Next, you have the nose. We're just going to bind that to the head bone. And then you have the mouths. 
this whole group can be bound to the head. And then you have the head itself, which can be bound to that bone. And now we're going to rig up the ears. And we're going to try the link bones method for this. So what we'll do here is come over here to ear one, click on that. And then using the select bone tool, we can just lasso around those bones. And then here at the top, we have the ability to link bones. So we'll go ahead and just click on that. And we can come down here to ear two, lasso those bones, and then choose to link bones. Now, if we come over here to frame six or any frame past frame zero, and we select the manipulate bone tool, we can come in here and just give this a test. And you can see now that we have this nice floppy looking ear. We may have to add some restraints to this as we continue to rig this up and animate, but we'll apply those constraints when we start to add physics. Next is the body. Let's go to frame zero and start with the front hand or the right hand. We can bind the layer just like that. Now for the arm, we're going to do that smooth joint pair again because it really allows us to create a nice little bend for the arm. So with those two bones selected, we can go up to bone and create smooth joint for bone pair. And we'll test this at the end, but for now, let's just keep going. We'll go to scarf and let's make sure that the chest bone is the one we bind for that. And then we have scarf bottom. We can also use the chest bone for that. For button, we can use the bottom body bone for that. And then for jacket, we can once again do the smooth joint. So we'll select both torso bones, go up to bone, and then choose to create the smooth joint for bone pair. For your legs, we're going to do the same thing. And then we have the back hand, we can layer bind that. And then the back arm, we're just going to come in, select both bones for that, and then choose bone, create smooth joint for bone pair. We are going to leave the tail. We will be doing that separately with a new feature from Moho 14. So we're just going to focus on the other elements right now. Let's come over here to copper once again, and Let's go to frame six and we can just kind of start to move this around. And as you can see, as we move the character with the body, it looks like the body is moving the way it needs to move. You have your arms and just try to ignore the tail right now because that's still going off of bone strength. We're just going to hide it for right now. You can see that we can move the arms and it looks pretty nice. Same with your legs. You can come in here and bend them. And right now, this is set up in a very basic and nice way. And of course, if you take the transform bone tool, you can move your pupils around. So there you go. That is how you can set up a basic rig inside of Moho. And again, this is just a very basic setup. There's a lot more you can do, and we'll be diving more into that here shortly.